I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. All right. Thank you all for coming. Um, please silence your cell phones. Again, so we can listen to them vibrate instead. <laughs> yeah, the text instead of an email this time. <laughs> all right, we'll go right straight into this. Is time for public comments regarding issues, matters, or matters not on the agenda, but within this jurisdiction of the City Council. The Wairika public comments period is not attended for a question and answer period or conversations with the council or city staff. Council members, when recognized by this mayor, may ask questions of the presenter, but no action may be taken during the city council during the public comment section of this meeting, except to direct staff to prepare, report, or place an item on future agenda. If you're here, please speak from the podium, state your name. For the record, providing the comments, please address the council as a whole. If you're not, if you have documents, present them please provide minimum of seven copies. Please limit your remarks to five minutes. Is there any public comments at this time? I don't know if we have anything on Zoom or anything. Nothing? Nobody? Chirp, chirp. Okay. okay. Well, then we will go right straight into what we're here for. This is this city budget for fiscal year of 21, 2022. And 22-23 budget documents available online, of course. So do we want to start off with you, Retta, or who do we want to go? Who wants wow. to be the first batter up? Anybody here? <laughs> I think it's you, Retta. Okay. <laughs> first of all, thank you for coming out this evening, um, spending your Tuesday after evening to talk about budget. Um, one of those exciting topics we um, get to visit. And um, I have a quick little PowerPoint that Arthur's going to share on the screen for the viewing audience um, this evening as well. Um, but kind of in, um, you kind of have a package. Yeah, we like, we like it. You like to, and we kind of have a colorful welcome to fall. I, I thought we I needed a little positive, positive um, upbeat because um, if you watch the news, it's not all, all good news for sure. Um, so anyway, I just kind of wanted to walk you a little bit through the budget process to so kind of take you where we've been, if that's all right. Mm -hmm. And um, so um, it began back in April um, 30th of 2021 when the, the, all the department heads spent many a couple of months reviewing their needs and um, staffing levels. And they gave to um, the finance director um their budget requests and then in may 20 may 26 of 2021 we had a special meeting where we kind of verbalized with all the departments heads here the kind of their needs and challenges that they have within their departments um and um sorry i get kind of nervous would you mind if i just or go for take it. it okay okay you're, you're over six you're, you're over six feet, feet so you're okay. good okay um thank you it's felt safe saying that you know. <laughs> yeah. um so anyway on may 26 2021 we if you recall we kind of had a special meeting and the department heads were here and kind of um and they spoke to you kind of on their needs and challenges that they've had this year with covid and and what um what the budget would include and so we had that meeting and then we kind of had a little pause here um, yeah, but by August 3rd, we reconvened with the finance committee with the budget documents, and we had two meetings with the finance committee with the recommendation being on the meeting of August 16th to come to the full council and another <laughs> special meeting and kind of recap where we're at and also give you, you as the full council a chance to um, give your input and um, maybe we can address your concerns um, that you might have in what the budget is doing are expected to support over the next two years. Um, and this document will change. It is a fluid document. You'll go through strategic planning. And again, that, that really is a driver of your budget and it, um, ultimately. So the budget just kind of follows your strategic plan when, um, when that's finally adopted and updated. And then um, what we're looking for, if things um, stay on track, we. Um, 
are looking for a tentative adoption date on September 7th. So, um, so our first round to the finance committee, we were looking at, we took all the kind of all the needs um, that were from the departments. And we had a fairly large deficit in the general fund. And um, so the finance committee, um, we kind of went through that and kind of walked through the budget a little bit. But the recommendation from the committee at that point was like, eh, you know, can you look at it again with the department heads and see if there's a few things perhaps we can trim. And so um, went back to the department heads and these, I just kind of wanted to go through how um, things were trimmed. So you know what was cut out from a, the department head request. And um, one thing that was evaluated was um, the HVAC system. It um, could, is an eligible um, project under the old goals park grant. And so right now public works is working on that. Um, and um, that grant will not fully fund the HVAC, but we'll backfill once we get the bids in, you know, it could be up to um, the BET HVAC project was, I think, I believe the engineering estimates were between 220,000 and 230,000. Um, you never know what it's gonna be till the bids come in. The old goal grants, correct me if I'm wrong, or there's about 180,000, a little less than that. Um, How much, they, I'm sorry, really? About 180,000. So we'll need to backfill on that out of capital reserves when the bids come in, but then you know exactly what you need to backfill at that point. Um, we looked at um, Christmas decorations. I guess it's not too early to be talking about that, but Ben really wanted to um, buy all new Christmas decorations for downtown. Um, that's about $45,000. He thought the decorations could last a couple of more years. And it might be a great um, public private partnership, mm -hmm. perhaps to get, you know, maybe some shared, um, some shared fundraising in that also. Um, so just that might be, but he thought we could cut that. Um, he was looking for 25,000 for a flashing sign for traffic safety. Um, and that's basically the sign kind of with the solar as you go by, it says, you know, road construction or slow down or, you know, um, flooding or whatever it is that they would alert. Um, we looked at that um, in purchasing this um, June or May, June kind of time period. And um, at the time he couldn't get the sign because of commodities. He really couldn't get the product he wanted anyway to kind of order it and close out the last fiscal year. But um, if it is deemed that it's more urgent, he'll come back when he gets that information and request that sign. Um, but that was, a he estimated at the time it'd be about 25,000. Another cut was, um, they, they have a standing in the budget, 75,000 every year for roofing repairs. Um, City Hall roofing does need to be repaired, but we also have a generous City Hall remodel budget that we feel would cover the roofing and it will tie it all with the same, same um, roofing product from that full remodel of um, enclosing the atrium and the ADA, ADA accessibility project. Um, and lastly was um, cut was 200, and, and this is a rough estimate, and I think the numbers will vary on that, but the, the intent was to put a placeholder here for the reading pool and filling that in. And so that was um, cut from this period. Um, it doesn't mean it can't come back or come back because it's a separate project, it was just set aside. So from those cuts, we were able to um, realize savings of 395,000 in the general fund and 22, 23, 325,000 in the general fund, which put the um, current year revenue less the current year expenses gap at 543,000 in 21, 22, and about 380,000 in 22, 23. Any questions on that? Am I on the right track? Keep going? No, go All right. Ahead. So um, got, made these changes, went back to the finance committee and had some areas of agreement. And so um, received direction that it's ready to bring back to the full council, um, the budget as it stands. Um, the committee understands that the adoption is now September. At that time, we were in August. Um, it, 
could be uh, as late as the second meeting of September. I think we're real close that we might be able to bring it back on the 7th. Um, the committee may or may not accept the budget is changeable, but we it is, it's a moving document. Um, I think there was frustration that costs um, had not been fully developed for the urban campground at that time. Mm -hmm. um, we do have some, and I know our city manager is certainly working on that. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll go over kind of where there is some set aside right now in the budget for that. Um, council members and knowledgers may not be a full consensus on the budget adoption, and we understand that. Um, the co committee um, was a little bit split on what is an acceptable level of general fund deficit spending. Um, and the committee at the time was able to shift um, into 22-23, the procurement of another um, police patrol car. I mentioned that one had just been delivered and was that was delayed from 2021 and that the um, tribe vehicle that should be on order now would be yet another vehicle this year so that one could be delayed into next year. So um, we didn't make that cut, but that's probably something we could still give them. Um, so, um, so I kind of want to now call out things that are in the budget that hopefully address some of those concerns that came up through committee work. Um, so I know um, in the budget is the ADA access and remodel at City Hall. As you know, um, this city was awarded a PI waiver agreement to remodel the City Hall. Um, the estimates at the time, which we don't have a full um, engineering um, designs, but um, at the time it was estimated about 900,000. That was about a, two years ago. And 1.25 million might be a little more realistic at this point. Um, but I think also in that, hopefully we can carry the roofing that's needed at City Hall. Um, so that's in the budget. Um, the community center HVAC, I know that is um, really um, something that in the course of um, June, the, um, we went ahead and did an appropriation for that. Um, and um, we know that the estimates are gonna exceed 185,000, but there'll be a city match post bid is likely for that. Um, expender appropriations for the urban cramp ground. The budget does include 120,000 all together and that 75,000 in the current year and another 45 um, in the next year at the time. I didn't realize there was a hazmat cost, so we'll right. need to consider that um, on there. And, and that's, but I know work's being done in that area. Um, included in the budget is a Carnegie Library planning grant or CDPG grant award for 250,000. Um, one thing important to public works was the um, electric, electric gates for lower Greenhorn Park. Um, and um, then we also set up over the summer, the abatement fund for code enforcement for property cleanup. So they start addressing those and feel like that they could get a court order, but then have the fund so that we set up a new fund, Fund 05 for 100,000. Um, and um, then South Oregon STIP, is included in there as well as replacement of the underground utilities for water and sewer. We don't have full engineering estimates on those underground utilities, but we've um, I've cross-checked with Public Works and they felt like what we have set aside for those is, would be adequate. Um, we have Highway 3 based on engineering estimates. We have the East Lennox and filter plant upgrades and we have the EDA cluster market study, grant study. And we have a full 15 sworn officers fold, folded in with the cost of police personnel. Um, and recently some areas that came to light, not include the budget, but could still be areas for discussion is, um, I missed your meeting, but it sounds like there's some interest in um, promoting some, um, allocating some funds for tourism and community events. Um, as we mentioned, there's um, not in the budget, I didn't allocate um, the Brownfields cleanup not knowing that estimate yet. Um, and also in the budget, um, another area for discussion is the um, ever-growing unfunded liability for the city's pension. Um, by 2025, we'll be funding a million dollars at the beginning of the year, and that doesn't include the employee match. So it's growing. It was 755,000 
this year and it is, it is dramatically increasing. So think of that as debt. Um, and then finally, um, from the current year forward, um, is how it would kind of, we're almost at that structural deficit in the general fund is how to either earn our way out or, and spend our way out. So earn, um, you know, look at revenue opportunities or unspend, meaning um, what cuts might be needed. So that's um, kind of the grim news, but I also want to call out in the budget. Um, so this is just kind of the recap of the numbers. I won't go into those any much, but the, the kind of the bright spot in all this is that we have received ARPA funds. Um, when I say ARPA, that's American Rescue Plan Act. Um, we tend to talk in acronyms. Um, and with the revenue loss, I'm not shaking in my shoes, um, is that we um, feel like we will be able to earn quite a bit of this deficit um, by recognizing um, revenue in the revenue loss model as allowed by the federal grant program um, of, from the Department of Treasury. And so we are able and over the next four years to run a revenue loss model, which is kind of complex, of which revenues are included, excluded, and the look back period. And it switches us part of it from fiscal year to a calendar year. So you can have to do all the ads, <clears throat> plus and minuses. But um, as you in July, we did receive just under 900,000 in our first allocation. Now all of that's now being recognized as unrealized revenue because we haven't gone through the process of realizing it. But if you took that and you divided it over the four years you could earn it, you can kind of see in the chart that could help you um, start finding your way out of unspending or earning um, more, more revenue. So it buys you a little time on that too. Um, and also some of these one times. Arthur, I think we're on the next slide, right? Yep. The hypothetical revenue loss. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so that's kind of, um, for, I think, for a lot of cities where we didn't have a lot of direct costs, some of the urban areas with COVID, um, it really does give us um, um, some good places to land um, and working through these, these needs. I wanted to touch real briefly on kind of um, the org chart, and please know this is draft because it's um, one thing is it's evolving. Um, fast, it's a little more dynamic than it's ever been, but it is evolving. And so, at this point, um, you're you kind of there are, um, are discussions and kind of like reassessing some of the um, titles and positions um, and. Um, for example, my position and some administrative services, you know, kind of breaking that apart and creating the HR director um, position and simplifying what I do. Um, and um, spinning off information technology, it may come back under finance at a future point, it may stay standalone. Um, we do contract for services, but there is a lot of overhead for administering um, and ensuring compliance. And then also um, there's some discussions as to um, for, through the re recent recruitments, whether or not um, the structure go back to, from a community development director to a planning director. So um, by the time this publishes, I hope that we've got this locked in. Um, and police department really hasn't changed. Um, they just, they have a lot of a lot of um, spots to fill, but I know they're working hard on that with HR. And um, Chief Gilman's actively recruiting and also Public Works. Um, a lot of their seats are getting filled on the bus, so to speak. And um, I think they're really um, going to have a strong structure as well through um, some of the changes and shifts being done. And um, we have our fire chief, and um, I really give him credit because it's extremely challenging running a department on volunteers. Um, and he does that very successfully. So um, I did also want to cut, call out in the budget that the budget contemplates a dollar increase for um, call out um, to 
the volunteers. So it's a dollar per call um, that they would receive. Um, it's really monetarily not that big, but I think recognition wise, um, it's huge. So. Um, what does that make it a dollar per call? Make it how much? Thirteen fifty. So I'm going to take a break and um, find out if anybody has questions or Randy, if you wanted to add anything. No. Okay. <laughs> um, and so the kind of the next part of the presentation is going to touch on kind of where things are for capital projects. Because the MO kind of is just moving along, not a lot of noise in the um, what I call MO, which is maintenance and operations and the personnel. Um, we will look at personnel a little bit because there were the, um, some positions restored and or added. Um, so we restored an officer, as you may recall, um, restored the OIT position, as you recall. And we have two contract positions that were added for the grant fiscal compliance manager and the construction. Um, um, let me get the right title on that because I always mess it up. Um, construction field tech and water wastewater evaluator. So within the general fund, um, this is non-grant driven. This is just coming from um, general fund resources. Um, we have 25,000 for major building maintenance. Um, that's city hall. It could also occur at any of the other facilities. Um, for police, we have a vehicle in 21-22 and 22-23. Um, we also have the vehicle that's going to be fully reimbursed by the tribe in, as well. Um, and we have munitions um, of 25,000 in 21-22. Um, in the parks, we have the park gates that we, automatic park gates that we talked about, um, playground and fall protection material in the parks. And grants, next slide, thank you. And this one for the audience, I apologize, it's a little hard to read here. But under our um, cap special grant, capital grants and planning grants, um, we still have a little bit of the um, SB2 planning grant and the 2020 LEAP planning grant that are still in process um, that are being um, fulfilled. We and the estimates of what's remaining was based on at the time of um, presenting this of how much had been spent. Um, so, and then we have the South Oregon STIP, um, that project. Um, we have 924,000, or excuse me, 75,000 this year in planning and then actual construction in 22, 23 of about 924,000. We have two little RSTP. Projects that we're expecting will be get done this year in 21 22, 93,000 for the Greenhorn pedestrian striping and the Yama Street ADA curbs. In the flood corridor, um, again, this could be dynamic because I know there's a special meeting to talk about the FHR grant, um, estimating um, at about a million per year, but I, I know that will probably change based on um, maybe scope of work changes. The um, EPA Brownfields grant, about 75,000, that's really variable upon the projects presented for them to do assessments on. Um, the EDA grant for 250,000, kind of got a little bit of late start, but I think it's on its way. So it could be estimating kind of split 50, 50, 100, 25,000 between the two years, it could accelerate and they could do more in 21, 22. I think all of us are more ambitious than we're able to fulfill in any one fiscal year. Um, and then also the Carnegie planning grant, um, 125,000 um, in each year. Again, it could vary between um, how much is spent each year. And these have matching revenue sources with them. So, um, and you know what? The, um, there is the old goals grant that didn't print out on this. I think um, so. I apologize on that. There's the old goals grant in there that should be um, on this listing. So I just wanted to call that out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there'll be a city match on that. So I think I printed that. It's, this is an older screenshot. So I apologize. Um, 
And on the community development projects, we have, um, this is kind of through that PI waiver application. So we have um, 500,000 from the um, PI waiver, and we're expecting that it'll probably take another 750,000 to complete the project. And that would be transfers in from the enterprise funds for their, their beneficiary use of um, AD access for utility building for city hall and things like that. Um, and then under the economic um, housing unrestricted, there's a hundred thousand for um, a bus replacement for Madrone Hospice. The other seventy five thousand is for the urban campground, and then in 22, 23, 45,000 for the urban campground. So I just kind of wanted to call out a little bit where that is knowing that there'll still be some money that needs to be um, allocated. Water capital projects, um, a, lot of, a lot of big um, action there on those water projects. Oh, and good news today, um, we closed the bank anticipation notes for 6,098,000. ,000. So that's nice to know that's done, hopefully. And what's that one for? Is that for uh... That's for the, um, the um, Interim financing for the USDA highway, um, highway three certificate of participation. <clears throat> for water capital projects, um, you see that out though of 375,000, that's for their share of the city hall remodel that gets transferred to the other fund. Um, the um, water distribution, um, the unrestricted, that's what we have um, pursuant to our USDA bond agreements for small equipment replacement. Um, and that follows the water um, rate study estimates. The um, USDA Highway 3 water improvements, um, not knowing quite how much will split across each year about um, total project. Um, cost is about 2.5 million in 21, 22, and 22, 23, about 1.7 million. Um, we do have 3.5 million coming in for the um, great work um, with public works on getting that funding in um, for that. And then we also will have some Caltrans um, cooperative agreement revenue coming in. So it looks kind of bad with that gap, but it's not as bad as it initially was. Um, South Oregon STIP, we expect that for the um, water mains, about 300,000 again, once the engineering plans are more refined on that, that could adjust. Water Prop 1 grants, um, looking at, um, so in the water distribution side, um, about in resource 6040, 1.7 million rounded um, in 21-22, and that one's out currently for bid and the water supply and treatment um, that also includes the um, improvements for the filtration plant and that also together both of those are on the street right now I think bids close um, in a few weeks so moving along on those and um, any questions on those Hopefully, we'll, hopefully we'll, Mr. Mayor, hopefully we'll have uh, funding coming in for the pool. But if we are awarded that, that's a hundred percent. There's no match. Right. Right. And that's a great point, John. I just wanted to call out that um, grant applications by themselves are usually not budgeted. Um, we usually budget those once the um, grant has been awarded and the city council accepts it. So for all the terms and conditions, and then we get fired up because that's exciting. Um, wastewater capital projects. Again, the outgo 375,000, that's a transfer out to, um, for the city hall ADA improvements. Um, the unrestricted is again, um, from the rate study for um, small, what they call um, small assets um, for replacement fund. And then our big USDA Highway 3 sewer project, and we have 6.3 million funded. We have for the South Oregon STIP for the underground utilities for sewer, 300,000. 
And then this is a great grant, another one, the Wastewater Prop 1 Planning Grant, um, or excuse me, um, it's the Sewer Collection System Improvement. That's a $5.5 million grant, and that was awarded. Um, there's an additional 70,000 of kind of carryover costs in case it runs over with commodity prices. Um, and that one was recently awarded. There are also some other grants that we should be getting award letters any day on. Again, we'll budget those once we um, get the award letters and accept the grant. Um, and that's another sizable project. So you've heard us talk about that and that um, it has to do with uh, storage tanks. Um, replacement of um, tanks. So, um, and in fund 560, unrestricted again, small equipment replacement. So that's kind of some of the big, big line items in the budget that um, were covered. And, um, and we've kind of talked a little bit on the staffing and why it's gone up by four FTEs and what who those people or what those positions are. Um, and then finally, um, it's kind of like, who watches us? A lot of people watch the city of Eureka. I just kind of wanted to call out uh, both federal state agencies and do that. And the state controller or this, um, excuse me, the state auditor's office also is um, doing metrics on your performance and um, publishing these um, report cards, basically on how your city is doing. Um, and um, trying to give more um, citizen-centric kind of perspective of how their city is doing um, on things. So um, kind of when they got on the big transparency disclosure for salaries and compensation, there's also now this big push for transparency disclosures on um, cities and how they're doing. So the good news is, you know, um, the, they measure us as low risk, but you can also see that, you know, they're calling out areas that they have from our financials areas of concern, and that's our, um, our debt burden and our future pension costs. Mm -hmm. So just, um, I'm not as concerned about our debt burden because they may not have factored in that we have special revenue for part of our debt. Um, for example, um, Measure H and um, also the debt to the county for the landfill access fee mm -hmm. it also has a a revenue source um, on that. So really our new general fund debt is our PD station that doesn't have any a, a specific revenue source other than the spillover of the measure C benefits um, on that. But, um, and I think probably almost not, I shouldn't say, I'm sure many cities have the future pension costs red button on them. I don't think we're alone in that. Mr. Um, Coy, did you have a question? Retta, what is the difference between uh, OPEB funding and OPEB obligation? Um, the one of my sewer yellow, one of my sewer green. That's so, why I ask. Sure. The obligation is what we've negotiated to give away um, for benefits. And the funding is how much have you um, made a contribution to your trust fund to cover those benefits. Given the dates on this and the lag time, I think you would see these go to green next year for the city, because I think we're um, just had the tipping point of where we're almost 100% funded. And if, well, before interest rates plummeted, so um, we had a chance of almost being sustainable on that, on the go forward. So I, that's kind of my presentation. And then I just kind of wanted to open it up to um, council members on kind of concerns they had, ideas they have, and, and where we want to go from here. <laughs> so this is your workshop. All right. Let's open it up. Yes, we can start um, off. Joe? Uh, just a, a general question um, on the deficit. Um, so uh, looking at the general overall deficit, it's come down quite a bit since the first time we saw it. So thank you for that. Thank you to all our department heads too, because I know it's, it's always hard to cut. Um, but it looks like, so we've got 543,567 in uh, 21-22, and then 384.48 in 22-23. So that adds up to 924. 
That's almost a million dollars. It's a little over nine hundred thousand dollars. So I heard you say that ARPA funding may be able to help us cover some of those expenditures if they are specific expenditures that are within certain range. So how much of this nine hundred thousand do you think that we'll be able to cover without having to dip into our, our reserves? I would say there's a good chance you'll recover at least 80% of it through the existing model of revenue loss. And you leave, um, unless there's been language different, you don't need to go through any further substantiation than this model being audited on your model and that being um, found correct in your calculations. Yes, Mr. Paul. However, the ARPA money, we cannot count on being part of our budget. It cannot, it not. It, it, yeah, it can't, it should not be figured in and it should not, when it comes, it'll come, but it'll come for last year. It'll come for the, the preceding year. I just was on the phone with our auditor before this meeting, because I'm kind of like, how mm -hmm. are you going to, how, when are you going to um, define that we recognize that? And he was unclear. And I'm just like, that's not the answer I wanted yeah. to come in for this evening with, but um the model looks at your revenue loss for calendar year 2020. The allocation was in our fiscal year 2021. The cash received was in July of 21, but that still follows our modified accrual convention for accrual. He's saying, however, that it may need to be recognized in 21, 22. And I said, if you could get back to me, you know, yeah. As soon as possible, that would be very helpful um, on on how we close our budget. So at this point, I'm hesitant to include um, it in the budget for two reasons. At this point, um, it is on our books; it's in cash and unearned revenue, um, and it's just when it's recognized. I'm sure we'll recognize a good deal of it through this revenue loss. Um, and um, if you do, if you don't, aren't able to satisfy it through revenue loss, my recommendation would be attach it to an existing federal project where you can need to augment because you're going to have to have all those federal overlays on a project of um, social, social justice, of, um, you know, vendors being, um, you know, your maybe we be and all your overlays for federal money. So um, you want to be careful that you can spend it without a whole lot of additional new overhead. So if you have an existing federal project and need to need um, augmentation on it, I would recommend that. But again, it's council's decision. You know, what you're recommending basically, when you, you say augment, it can't supplant anything that we're doing. It can't be used to supplant anything. Right. But okay. it can augment where the city was matching. For example, if we had a million dollars where we um, needed a million dollars on one of these highway threes that where we're using federal funds already. Um, and we're doing like with USDA has all the federal overlays or with CDBG, those are federal dollar pass through dollars. Those have all the overlays. That might be a place to look. Um, I, I do think we're, we will be able to hold it in the general fund because remember our enterprise funds have fee revenue. They were planning for these things. Our general fund is, is where um, I think we would have um, some benefit on that, but we are going to need to look forward and how to, um, with these growing expenses and our labor costs increasing and our pension um, costs. When I say labor costs, it's, it's salary, it's pension, it's workers comp is not going down. It's just going up. Um, those are expensive um, ticket item components of payroll. Thank you. Yeah, that's right. So, so, uh, Mr. Yes, Mayor, so, uh, so um, that's the good news and the bad news, right? Yeah. So, uh, so if it impacts federal funding, then we cannot supplant, as, as uh, Council Member McCoy said, that we could augment the deficit 
by using it that way, even if it's payroll? What I'm saying is you would earn it through the revenue loss. You aren't assigning it to any one item. You would just earn it through your revenue loss. Gotcha. And it's, it's a fairly clean way um, to earn it through that revenue loss model if you can. Um, I, I would strongly recommend that, keeping it in the general fund because you do have some, some substantial um, cost cutting to do or revenue generation to look forward to um, at this point. To look forward to. Hmm. <laughs> it can be done. It's just, you know, and, and again, I applaud you wanting to work um, with our city manager on strategic planning because now is the time to plan because it yes. takes four years to get some of these things to fruition. On this, um, you've made some measured steps on the development impact fee. That's um, I still would want to consider um, storm drainage system. Um, that's a burden on the general fund. There is no revenue for that. Even if you get your MS4 mage waiver, you still have the storm drainage infrastructure to support. So um, it's going to be a lot of a lot of. Um, thought process on how, how the city will um, emerge through all this. But the nice thing is you have some revenue to um, allow you a little more flexibility in that. But it's not sustainable for long periods of time. Questions? Yes. Because we have such large expenses coming up with Highway 3 and some other major projects, mm -hmm. Is there any way we can postpone, even though I feel, I don't know about the rest of you, but I feel a little overwhelmed that there's so many projects going on at the same time that require so much attention. It would be nice if we could say the next two and a half years focused on the Highway 3, which we really don't have that much control over the time frame at all. Um, and not say no to some of these projects, but when we get Highway 3 done and the dust settles, uh, does it make sense to postpone the remodel of um, City Hall here, of uh, the Ringy Pool fill in, that kind of stuff? So the Ringy Pool was cut from the budget. Um, yes. So, in essence, that's kind of a postponement of sorts. Mm -hmm. um, the City Hall, I think you probably could, you would just need to update your grant agency why you aren't moving forward on it but perhaps some of the engineering or excuse me design work you could go out in rfp for design i'm just trying to think of what projects we can put on hold uh, just till we get our finances better um, controlled well that's i think joan why has a comment there but like I said, some of that depends on grant funding too. You know, we, we only have a certain amount of time. Is, I didn't bring to, it like, to City Hall, that. the grant funding. I will give me that part of that. Watch out the time frame wise. So I, right. I agree right. that we should postpone what we can, but I'm not sure. It really is compressed, right? Joan, do you have a comment on that? Oh, uh, yes. I, I, I have some pretty strong feelings on that. I know. Um, <laughs> so we've been talking about doing some kind of an upgrade, remodel, or something in City Hall. And I would really like to see us move forward incrementally. I mean, even if we can't afford the whole thing, but somehow. For instance, I don't know how many of you, I mean, I know we come in and out of here all the time. I don't know how many of you notice how shabby City Hall looks. Mm -hmm, I bad. mean, it looks bad. This is a matter of city, city pride. Right. Um, I would really hate to see us put it off for another six years. Some of us won't be here. Um, but uh, I just. Um, are you, you're not, don't, you're not kicking uh, the bucket, are you? Wait a second. <laughs> who knows? Who knows? Um, I, I do notice that, you know, they, uh, uh, they, the public works did, you know, do some work right over there on that. Fascia what they board. call that fascia board. Uh, but if you notice when you come in on this side, oh, bad. It's mm -hmm. really, it's really bad. And I have had people, especially new people coming to town, ask us, you know, why our city hall looks so bad. So um, I understand, and I know when you, that my 
home family budget, when you haven't got money, you cut back on food or whatever you need to eat the basics. You don't have steak, you have hamburger or tuna. Uh, but by the same token, I would really, on, on an important project like that, at least to me, I would like us to at least incrementally move forward if we can. Um, I'd hate to see us just wipe it off the board. Oh, I wouldn't want to wipe it off, but what I was. <laughs> what I was thinking, I was trying to pull up any projects that aren't mandatory um, specifically to the function of the city. Um, not that anything we're requesting is a luxury item. It's no, just that the uh, if there's any way to play with the times. So know. I guess main question, since you brought it up, I would like to bring up this, this city hall remodel. Is there already grants in progress, right, to where we can get some funding? Is there CDBG money? Right, we have an allocation um, of, from pro, from 2018 of the program income on that. Yeah, in the ward letter. Right. I believe the ward letter, um, I could be wrong. I just looked at it today. I believe it's 2019. Um, the, oh, the letter, the award letter was given in 2019. Uh, I was looking. We could all move to the new police station. <laughs> yeah. Visit with Mark, and we'll have a nice, pretty new building. So on that, what is there time constraints on that? I would have to check with any um, to, uh, has the project management on that. I think we do need to show some signs of life along the way um, for it. The other thing, um, I think, you know, there is a lot of compression right now with deadlines on these capital projects. Uh -huh. um, and I know the project managers now um, just got some Microsoft project so that we can start managing against the deadlines. Um, and looking at how we're doing because you need to be working collaboratively with your granting agency. If you aren't going to make one of these, you need to be working closely with them um, in either asking for a contractual extension. Um, no matter how nice they are, when you miss them, if you're under contract, it's kind of a problem. Yeah. So I guess getting back to City Hall one too, because my, my major concern with the city hall one was more ADA accessibility more than anything. I don't, beautification, I mean, we can put a slap a coat of paint on it, make it look pretty, whatever, but, and make the function of it, you know, the roof and fix all those sort of things. But we've already entered a certain stage on it to where we've the engineering part of it, but is there any way we could scale back on any of that and still be okay? I think you just need to go through the design and engineering to our design and arch architectural design, excuse me, um, to get an estimate of cost. I think there were just preliminary drawings done by Guy Fryer and kind of a swag number. Yeah. Years ago, years ago. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, my main thing on the whole city hall was ADA accessibility right. more, than, more than anything. Right. It's, gonna it's, it's, it's gonna get us eventually. Right, yeah. it'll, it'll be a, Huh? grand jury or something oh yeah there's nothing the front counter is not proper height the bathrooms aren't ada equipped i mean there's a whole list of yeah. things that aren't yeah. ada compliant on this hall right now right. there's right. some great there was some great um great brainstorming that was done i, I thought i thought the plans were really nice yeah um, yeah now you haven't seen any of that have you corey no so that's something that we need to get for Corey. And you've you've seen it though, have you? Have, you have not either, Paul. You know what? Um, that should be. Excuse me, Mr. This, Mayor. That should be part of our strategic planning. Yeah. We should take a look at that. Yeah, they they should have they should have that ahead of time though. It's mm -hmm. definitely. So they even so they can bring brought up to speed on that for sure. Yes, Mr. McCoy. What I would re re respectfully request from Council Member Baird is a an idea uh, i mean because I, I think what she's what she's saying in theory is very very true the, the dilemma is how do you cut back on say a, an hvac system that we've drug our feet on for the last 15 right. years exactly. how do you cut back on a pool that we drug our feet for the last 20 years and done nothing about it but i would respectfully request because i think it's a good idea a cost benefit time benefit analysis based on if we pull certain projects how much is that going to help the city in the cost or in the timing of getting these projects done? And if the one project that we're aiming at in this by cutting things back is the highway project, I'd like to see how it speeds it up. 
how it how it changes it. I mean, I think you know, I think we need to look at it as opposed to poo pooing it. I'm not advocating one way or the other, but if you're going to look at it, you need to look at the whole thing, and you need to compare apples and apples and oranges and oranges. Thank you. No, I agree. Yes. yes. One of the other uh, issues I was concerned with is that what we suggested to Caltrans that we wanted to add to the project is the um, it's going to draw the money down, whereas if we don't have any money to draw from or if that's not a line item at this point, which I don't think it is. So. It is not at this point. Yeah, so we'll have to pull that out of our hat also. And um, if we're already over budget, something's got to give somewhere. And I'm not saying abandon these issues. I'm saying how many, how can we how many expenses can we juggle at one time? And I think we've passed our limit. So uh, I'm okay with, um, more discussion on what the priorities might be. It's just that I'm throwing some ideas out there that doesn't interfere with the city functioning the way it should. So it has to be something on the sidelines. Right. And, and we did expect this compression of capital projects all kind of coming at the same time. And that's, okay. that's why Rob is on there for construction oversight. Um, that's why Josh is on staff to make sure we stay on track from the physical compliance side. So, um, but it doesn't mean that there's not some pressure out there for, to meet them. Yes, no. The number one cost we have in operating the city is labor. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so if you're looking at this, I was looking at it, around $200,000 for the highway for planters. $15,000 for the chamber is what they asked for at our last meeting. $5,000 for Friends of the Museum. For the urban campground, I would say, you know, if we're looking at something that is, if we're looking at something that is contaminated and we're going down, I, you know, I don't understand, I don't know, because I don't know that we've heard from our public works director, but I had, they had said from six to 12 inches that from one end of the campground to the other, or six to 18 inches initially. So you could be looking at 125 to $200,000 there, maybe depending on where it has to be hauled and who has to come in and haul it if there's not a, a, an approved hauler here. So, um, you know, as we look at this budget, one of the things we may need to look at is where do we cut employees? Where do we cut services? It's not my favorite thing to do, but as in schools, um, a, a city and a school, which I know for 30 years, they don't operate in a business world. They go bankrupt because in a business world, you don't have 50 or 60 or 70% or 80% of your money tied up in employees. You have 15 or 20%. So, I mean, I think that as we look at it, We'll look at projects, uh, but we're gonna have to look long and hard at things that might be each of our, I have my own pets that I'd like to see, but we may have to look long and hard at what those pets are and maybe decide where to plug them in later down the road. Absolutely. It's not gonna be fun no. and, and people are not going to be happy with this. And if we're running for reelection, um, you know, you just have to vote the way you, uh, Think is the best for the city. I look at long term for the city for sure. Unfortunately, is we don't have a, a budget that is unexpendable. <laughs> yes. I have one more question about the urban site. Yes. Uh, do we have the option, and it, would it be more cost effective to pave the area and encapsulate the contamination? Is that less expensive? Well, the uh, problem is we can't pave it because you kind of defeats the purpose of the campsite. Well, it's kind of hard to pitch a tent. Oh, well, <laughs> but, no, but it, there are other options as far as that goes. Right, well, the other option, yeah, I don't know at this stage of the game if there's any other option because it's already identified as a problem. We could encapsulate it with concrete or, right. or uh, asphalt. The one thing I remember in the summertime would be beastly hot. Because asphalt absorbs, uh, it's going to absorb the heat, and and concrete is going to reflect it, but it's still going to be hot. So I mean, yeah, if you are just encapsulating it, we wouldn't be going through all of this. Like if we were putting in a parking lot, we wouldn't be worrying about it. Exactly. So it's, yeah, that's a good question. But I don't know how else we could do it and still be able to set up a, a, as far as a campsite goes. You know how we how do you, how does that picture look? I don't know. Well, it still have regulated. 
areas of where they can be, it can stripe it or whatever. And tints can be held down with the products that are inside of it. So it doesn't have to be a stake well, in the ground kind of thing. But well, if it doesn't, if it isn't cost effective, I'm just saying. No, it'd be cost option? effective on that aspect. I'm just not sure if I follow how we can uh, secure the, the tents down. Because like I said, just putting stuff inside of it. Well, if they go away and they're not at that point in time and they're taking their belongings with them, there's nothing to hold it down to it big wind comes up and it flies off. So I don't know. Well, there's eye hooks, such a thing as eye hooks in, in poured product. I guess we could, yeah, we could figure out some way of uh, doing some type of hook system, I guess, in the, into the pavement or concrete would be the only other option. I'm just not. I'm, I'm sure there's an answer. I might not know it or we might not know it here, but uh -huh. I do think that's an option. Not only would it be quick, but it, it yeah. is going to be hot though in the summer. Yeah, very, pay, pay very be, hot. Yeah. So you may lose your campers in the summer and then they come back in the winter. Yeah. I, I just have a quick question, Mr. Mayor. So uh, regarding that, either or, uh, have we gotten any figures back yet? Um, has Public Works gone out to, to bid to find how much it's actually going to cost to take that uh, lead out? Yeah. Get the lead out, if you will. Take the lead out. <laughs> Uh, Randy's got something. We're in the process of that. Uh, at the present time, I'm working with two council members on options for development of the site and creating something that will be an acceptable uh, permanent right. site for the homeless. We aren't prepared to answer those questions at this moment. Um, there's an engineering issue with getting the final bid or actually an RFP out right. to get a bid for soil removal, if soil removal is going to be the way to go. You know, you suggested there may be options for the soil. Certainly that's been suggested. So we'll have to study those and bring you a report. And we're in the process of doing that. Um, it should be to you very quickly. Because I think we need that in order to approve a budget. We need to have numbers, don't you think? Well. There's a lot of projects out there that would be nice to have numbers on. Yeah. <laughs> Some of this just doesn't happen because we want it to. In this case, we have an engineering firm that's essentially going to the sites where the soil could be disposed of and negotiating a cost for you know, a, whatever unit of soil is going to go there. And then we'll bring that back and tell us this is the estimate you, you should use when you go out to bid. Without having that type of information, yeah. we can't assure those who have companies that will actually transport contaminated materials over state highways mm -hmm. um, will bid. I mean, they have to know that we know what we're doing and they have to know that we can afford to do it. Mm -hmm. So we're in that process of developing that at the present time. We'll definitely look into, you know, like you said, paving. I'll we'll look into whatever, you know, try to figure something out. The thing about that, even even bringing in some type of uh, uh, ground cover of some sort, is even six inches or whatever layer, would that, you know, it, it would have might to be, be asphalt. A, it would have to be asphalt. It has to be as as asphalt. Right now. And asphalt yeah. as a foundation for people camping is probably a non starter. And I think you'd come to that conclusion. Well, just after, using common sense. I mean, yeah. Well, yes, but I'm not saying just have them roll their sleeping bag on it. I, I have seen paved areas with um, little eight by 10 storage units converted into housing developments that are on top of it. And people can walk on that with their shoes and that kind of thing. Also, a structure over the top some kind so, of a and we barn probably will be looking into that and in, for the future because a lot of the trees we're gonna have to prune up to a certain stage and some of them may not be the, the most suitable for a long term so we will be looking at some type of covered structure probably for the future anyways too mm -hmm. as far as that goes uh, right now we're just hoping to utilize the right. uh, the trees and whatnot we're, we're getting into details now yes. yes and i'm just saying we're not prepared to present right. you details correct so and on got it. top of that, all we'd be doing is talking about what we think is going to happen. So, so we'd prefer it, to bring you a proposal. No. 
uh, so in, in conjunction to that too, we, you know, we, with the budget wise, we have to start somewhere with some type of numbers. Um, and the thing about that too is going down the road, we can always amend the budget and tweak it a little bit that way too. So, when you, have you know, the thing about that is things that we need to, things that we can discuss and tweak that are as much substantial because we need to figure out what we can tweak. We need to discuss that now. If, we, if there's nothing that we can really tweak right now, then we need to move forward as, you know, as, as quickly as possible on this on this uh, budget, just trying to keep uh, good faith with all the creditors and people that we have money out there with right now. And we can always go back and amend the budget and, and get some of this stuff situated. But we, there, we definitely need to discuss anything we can tweak, though. Yes. yes if I might, on, on page four of Retta's um, budget presentation, one of the things that she does point out, and she and I met, I think it was earlier, was it this week? Early, yeah, yesterday for a short time. And it's something that she's trying to get through my skull. And I think we all need to understand that we need to accept the budget, as you said, as a changeable document. And I, I know that I have it. Reddit can tell it when I talk to her. She goes, no, Paul, you got you to see it's, it's in change. I never saw it in change in my past government job. And that's, that's an issue. And that it is possible to move forward knowing costs, like for the urban campground or pending. And, um, and we don't necessarily have a good feel for those estimates. Now, that being said, it could be that as they move forward, we scratch the money because it's too much. We don't scratch the project necessarily, but we scratch the money because it's too much or we come in and we go, oh, it's only instead of X, 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 Y, it's only X, Y dollars. And so it's less. And so we're able to, you know, maybe we'll be pleasantly surprised. But the other thing is if the council as a whole, um, or at least three of them feel that uh, when you get to a point where money, where funds need to be appropriated for soil removal of the urban campground, it will be, it would be because it is a living document, correct me if I'm wrong, because it is a changing, moving document Always. until the, the last day of the year, um, the council could come to the city manager and to the finance director and say, we, we want to go ahead and put this in. We want to look for another place to, to, for lack of a better word, steal it from you know, to, to take it from. And at that point we could appropriate, right. or again, we could choose not to appropriate. It's not, it's not a, it's not a done, nothing's a done deal. Right. And I want to add too, as far as this urban campground goes too, once we get something established, I'm very, very confident that I can find through the resources that are available out there, some other type of funding to help with the situation too, because there is there is definitely a lot of funding out there, and there's more and more funding coming across through the state um, state level and some through the federal level too on on you know homelessness. So there's some stuff that I'm very confident once we get it up and going that we'll be able to utilize. It's just a matter of getting it up and going. <laughs> and I know we're getting into details again right now, and so I don't want to. It's all going to the county. It, so most of it goes to the county. To have an agreement with the county to oh, share that's... some of that because we, at this point in time, we are footing the bill. It would appear that we're footing the bill for a lot of the costs. So we've got to come up with some kind of an agreement with the feds and the state and the county. Yeah. Um, like I said, the main, main thing is with, the, with the county and, and I have a meeting tomorrow, matter of fact, with them. So um, there's definitely going to be some discussion on how to move forward with some of this once we get things up and rolling. So, the uh, councilwoman Beard's points are well taken. Yes. By me. Oh. They're well taken and I appreciate it. And I. <laughs> <laughs> and when we pass a, approval a budget down the road, to, in my head, I'm thinking, okay, that's our budget. So, I do appreciate being reminded that there's some flexibility there and I need to stop sweating bullets. Right. So you, you know, when we come to you and we have new information, you'll hear a supplemental appropriation. What that's doing is modifying the budget. And um, in closing the books, what we do is a big recap of those supplemental appropriations all in one document to you. 
um, as well as transfers as allowed between um, programs. Thank you. So, so let me uh, ten thousand pound gorilla in the room, at least in my opinion. So we're probably looking at reserves of some kind. So what kind of reserves do we have available to us? Not that we would want to spend all our reserves no. at once, but but we're going to have to balance the budget. And right. We, if we don't have a method for it, we will have to take it out of reserves, correct? Well, you're going to have um, possibly some earnings of ARPA um, in there. So as far as how deep you might need to dip in the reserves, um, this is just a plan I can guarantee you will not close um, according to the budget, but hopefully we've outlined enough of the um, estimates that um, there's no surprise, big surprises on that. Um, there'll be new revenues that come along, um, what you generally one time. Um, sometimes we get um, dividends from SCORE um, and things like that that come in one time. We're getting a loan payoff from the EDC building that's coming in. Mm -hmm. It's closing another one-time revenue. We also have one-time costs um, that are non-recurring as well. So those are just kind of the dynamics. Um, we recognize those once they come in and then we um, modify the budget to recognize those um, new one-time um, revenues or expenditures as, as approved. So we still didn't talk about reserves. <laughs> oh, about 5.5 .5 million. The simplistic answer is absolutely correct. Just like any budget that you have at your home or anywhere else, if you spend too much, that has to come out of something. So if you have savings, right. it has to come out of it. But so far, you're only talking expenditures for projects you may or may not want to do or may or may not want to prioritize. You know, the other avenue you have is to increase your revenues. Mm -hmm. okay. And I don't know if that's been discussed in a while, uh, but that may be part of doing I a strategic so plan is to talk discuss, about, yeah. you know, what other revenues you can get. I think you're only at a quarter of a cent and a half a cent. We're at a half, half a cent. Yeah. I, half a I, cent. I, no here, cent. I worked on that. Yeah. We got a half a cent, but that's half of that is for safety which is split between um, the, the police department and the fire department. And then the other half is all roads. You know, you absolutely can't say that because you passed it yes. as a general tax. That's a general tax. So technically it is not, even so though the, we if you, made it, presented I mean, it that way. That we well, you could tell people that, and but the money comes to the council, to yes. the city, mm -hmm. and then gets spent however the council mm -hmm. wants it to be spent. You have an obligation, obviously, yes. because you told people you were going to spend it a particular way. Mm -hmm. You have to spend it that way. But well, if you that. absolutely call it a special tax and reserved it only for something, yep. then you have to have a 66% vote to approve exactly. it. Exactly. That's right. how we got it on a 50% right. vote. Right. That's how we got to go but through. If you go out to do, you know, you can go up for another half cent. I think the limit is one cent now. Right. A Crescent City just passed a one cent um, really? sales tax. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. wow. But so, I bet they didn't have the half cent before. They did not. So in, in an attempt to balance your budget, you could request the voters approve that for a period of time or for perpetuity. Um, those That's one option. I mean, we can look at other options where you might raise revenue if that's what you'd like us to do. Yeah, I think so. I, I don't know about the rest of you, but I would I like- I think it's worth discussion yeah. at this point. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. We have measure H, we have measure C, you know, we have that, that's the fire department, measure H, measure C is- the We can C. go through the alphabet. Yeah, <laughs> but, I'm, but what I'm saying is we're layering tax upon yeah. tax. Yeah. Upon tax. Yeah. You know, a lot of um, cities have special assessments for lighting uh -huh. districts, exactly. all kinds of things. Um, most have the stormwater fee. Yep. Um, that's there's a lot of- addressed, yeah, you're right. Yeah. 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 So yeah. there is a lot of opportunity in revenue development. Mm -hmm. The only revenue source that we have addressed has been builder fees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. three years that I've been on the yep. yep. Development fees. Like, what? Development fees, building oh. fees, measuring mm -hmm. tax. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have a need to put more money into your parks. You suggested several projects yep. yeah. and even increased maintenance there. District. There's parks uh, assessments that can be done. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are things we can bring back to you. 
No. Just not now, please. You're right. Yes. Move no. forward with the budget as is. Well, How about next week? I'm not sure we can go there because if, if, when, when we get the $8.5 million for the pool aquatic center project, there has to be yes. a parts and That's rec true. district put in place to That's cover true. those fees. No. Okay. To cover the cost of running it. Of the maintenance, yeah. So that's going to that that be dedicated. I, I think what the the initial plan was to set up a, a special district for park and rec. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. And, you know, you could do also do a special assessment um, as yeah. well for park and rec. When you do a special district, you are duplicating some efforts of administration and uh, maintenance. So you might not get as much direct benefit yeah, as you yeah. think you will. Whereas a special assessment might not have that duplication of overhead. And they both good have point. to be passed by the voters. Correct? That's correct. Right. Okay, so. That's a good point. Yeah. You know, I, I think we need to do a lot, I think we need to do a lot better job of informing the community that the expenses of running a city are going up. We're not right. just going right. asking for funds. Yeah. And this budget, I wish more people would have shown up to recognize some of the increased costs that we're dealing with that we never have before. But I know it costs more to maintain my household and I'm sure. I'm hoping that the community thinks that, but I think it would not hurt to remind the community that everything's going up, including the cost of government. That's true, that's very true. And Renzo is very positive at doing that. Yes, thank you. Today, NPR, I'll just share this. NPR, I don't listen to them very often, but how their mouth was that Medicare is done in 2025. I saw that. Uh, Medicare is done. Wow. It's done. I thought it was 2034. Yeah. Social Security is done in 2034. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Medicare is done in 2025. Um, <laughs> Great. So, and a lot of it has to do with. A lot of things, but a big is that those of us at the big are always retired. So the rest of us get so to pay. It, it is the, the point is, we die. <laughs> the, the point is that yes, everything is costing more. It's yeah. Costing more, it's costing more. Wow. So yes, Mr. Um, I guess I really don't. I just want to comment on a couple of things. <laughs> I've been sitting quiet listening. Um this is my first budget actually since taking my seat. So <laughs> Um, so Lorenzo, yeah, he appreciate him. He does post the meetings to a large audience, inviting them to come. They don't, so that's disappointing. He's reaching a lot of people and tells them when it's going to be. They should be here, and no one shows up. So it's disappointing. But thank him for putting that out there. Um, as Councilman McCoy stated, we keep kicking a lot of this stuff down the road. I mean, I've been. Remember four years ago, the theater did not have a HVAC system. It was out then. So we're four years later, and you go back to think four years ago, what would it cost if it was done then? And now it's costing way more money. What's going to cost us if we go down two more years down the road? Double that? Are we going to be in the same position, worse position, if we don't address some of the issues of increasing our revenue or looking at other ways? Because I just don't see. An easy way. Yeah. Well, it's like you said, we can't keep kicking this down the road. Swimming pool is a prime example of kicking it down the road. Now we don't have a swimming pool, so that's a prime example. And we're almost the same way with the skateboard park. So, so it's another one of those things that let it go too long, and it's worthless and wasted, and then we have nothing for our public to enjoy. Same mm -hmm. with the parks and everything else. If we don't keep them, maintain them, then it, they just They'll go in the back burner and nothing gets done. And then next thing we know, we don't have any parks or anything for anybody to go. So yeah, we, right. we gotta keep on it. There's a there's a part of you know our job is to keep a certain amount of things up and going to where we have a place to go that we call home. And this is part of our home. Greenhorn Park is part of our home. The, these those sort of things. Ringy Pool was part of our home, you know, that we grew up on. Mm -hmm. We wanted the, the kids to share and we lost that. So these things we keep kicking them kick them behind and don't do anything about the next thing you know, we don't have anything for anybody to come back to. It's like why it's, we here. Right. And city hall was my question. I agree on that totally is I don't want to be having someone come in and say, 
well, you're out of compliance of ADA yeah. and you're going to do this within two months or three months and you better have a plan. And we're sitting here going, oh gosh, we shouldn't have tabled that, you know, because they will do that. Oh, they can. Fines. Mm -hmm. fines. Exactly. So that's what my question was on that and you touched on it. So I don't know, it's tough. It's not easy we're sitting up here. Perhaps it would behoove us in the short term to have the city manager and staff work on budgeting based on any get uh, uh balancing the budget based on information we're giving them tonight and then have them begin to work on long-term plans to look for more revenue what, whatever that might be whether it's a half percent or a quarter yeah. of a percent of a or half percent of a tax or of a sales tax or whatever maybe we need to look at that doesn't mean we have to do it right i'm not big i'm not you know huge on that i mean we already we're already the second most highly taxed citizens in the nation um by state but you know, and I hate going to places where you're spending 10, 11, 12% sales tax, but you know, I, we, we do go there. So <laughs> we visit. So I just, I don't know how the rest of you feel. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess at this point, I guess for the, obviously uh, we need consensus to move forward on looking for other, other revenues. If, they, if the rest of the council would like for them to pursue that in the, for the future, not obviously, not next week, but the week after would be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> but yeah. I'll, I'll put it on the top of the list for the new manager. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Joe. Uh, so, Mr. Mayor, I do have a question for Retta. So, Retta, some of the information that you sent to us from our auditors and it's stated uh that we have to have a budget passed in a certain amount of time yes. so how much time do we have because i see that you know in here that you're uh talking about having a budget passed september by 7th. september 7th the next mm -hmm. meeting and uh if and if we don't agree on something tonight then it'll be discussed again and it may not be until the following meeting which is what the 14th no, the 21st, 21st. Yes. I think we're right at that tipping point of needing it passed with the debt we're carrying. Um, right. So, no, it's not an ideal budget, um, but it's a workable budget. Mm -hmm. And um, and there is some time um, because we do have strong reserves. Um, when you get your next treasurer's report, you're going to see there's about $27 million in cash. And cash is equal to reserves less plus or minus receivables and payables for the most part. Or, um, and, um, and some of that's designated, of course. But um, there, there's, we're in a strong position and that's, we're better than some cities. You know, I think whomever um, comes in after Steve, hopefully, or excuse me, after Randy, <laughs> I apologize. I really, um, uh, uh, Gosh, I was doing so well and I blew it. Um, oh man. Okay, well it's been it started about 5 30 this morning. So it's been long day. Um, but uh, and I do apologize. I'm sorry. He doesn't look like he's taking offense. Uh, um anyway, um Randy's successor uh, should be pleased coming in with um a strong physical Reserve. position yeah. um, because they aren't, as you say, taking draconian measures of cutting staffing yeah. and things like that. You've yeah. got time to work out the problems. Yeah. But um, as Randy has pointed out, the budget should be following that strategic plan. Um, right. And that's where you say, hey, we need some revenue development, whatever you call it, new revenues, um, yep. kind of like revenue development and some quite as bad as taxes or or higher rates or fees, but um, yeah, you can do that. Yeah, you can do that. I think so. And um, you've got a lot of projects. You've got a lot of um, good grant money, and I say that because it's a lot of infrastructure, you know, improvements that we need. Um, but you know, when you're um, asking staff, be cognizant of all these new initiatives that they're still working on all these capital projects and delivery of those. Mm -hmm. So that is gonna be your toughest balancing act um, for Randy and the, um, his successor in, in you know, managing that because we need to deliver on those, on those contracts. And your successor. And my successor yeah. as well, correct. Yeah, exactly. Wow. So um, I, what's that? 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> budgeting, budgeting never is. Losing people. Yeah. Um, so, so I want to I want to add something to what you know we brought up earlier. Corey has bring you know brought up about you know these projects and getting set on set behind on the wayside and not getting done and stuff. Part of the reason why we have uh, this um, reserves is because we didn't do some of these projects too. And you got to mm -hmm. think of that. The reason why, you know, we have a bunch of these reserves is because we didn't do anything with the swimming pool. We haven't done anything with the community center. So that reserves in a sense, kind of uh, should have been, it was kicking it down the road. And we should, if we would have addressed the issues back then, yeah, we wouldn't have as much reserves, but now we're facing, unfortunately, the money that we're facing now if we would have done them then would, would have been, been less done. money so i get it but we kicked the can down the road so far now that it's cost that can's gotten expensive so <laughs> it's gotten expensive and you have a compression of deadlines so that's one thing as you have new initiatives is is be cognizant i would say um because i can say that I'm here. <laughs> but of of your commitments you still have on the table to meet Right. And and the resources that are required to meet those, so that's um, that's the balancing act that I think um, everybody's working through. So one other thing, Red, because one of the questions I know I don't maybe maybe I missed it. I think Joan asked how much do we have in reserves. I thought she answered that when she said twenty seven million. Twenty seven million. Yeah, about twenty seven million in okay, cash. I'm sorry, I and I I can uh, okay. pull a thought at, um That's fine. Well, and give you the reserves. It was cash. delayed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, general funds about five point five million. Okay. Is that all funds or general funds? Just general operating. And then oh, there's capital five. reserves, mm -hmm. and that's there's it's, there's all kinds of different reserves. And if I had the audit in front of me, maybe Arthur, can you go to CIY Rica CAUS and go to finance tab and pull up the um, audit? Our transparency. This is what Red has been working on for years. Transparency, <laughs> right? So 5.5 million, I heard her say, for general fund. Right, for general So fund. that's, I don't want to say we can use all of it. But oh, it's under to. departments and under finance. And y'all are, it could, any point can go in audited financial statements. Oh, let's go back one more. There you are. And let's look at the 2020 audit of financial statements. And then you're gonna kind of scroll down past the MDNA, so about 20 pages. <laughs> Sorry. But anyway, there's a page in there that just kind of outlines your reserves by function, by what, whether they're designated. Um, keep on going, Arthur. It's gonna be quite a while here. <laughs> And keep on basic financial statements. Okay. And next one. And whoop, go back. Uh, and next one, sir. One more. Uh, fund balances here in Nevada City. Uh, we have funded balances. We have non spendable, restricted, assigned, and unassigned. Kind of uh, between the general prime. You can maybe bring that up a little bit. Thank you so much. Um, you can kind of see uh, unassigned 5.6 million as of the close of um, fiscal year 2030. Okay. So that's very strong position to be in. So. Yeah. Um, thank you, Renee. Yeah, so, thank you. But yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. McCoy. No, that's no, okay. I just wanted to uh, speak for myself. And then I think, Reddy, you've done a good presentation tonight. Yes. Um, I, I, I would recommend that the council think seriously about this budget with, again, with City and Red looking back, seeing if they can tweak it and fine tune it some. And, and I would recommend that we do our best, as uh, Joan Smith Freeman said, to live within our means. Thank but you, I, think it's, I think it's a good budget as it sits. I think it, there are good numbers there. And, and I would recommend that as we move forward that we you know, you know, just if she, if you come back with uh, to us with, you know, other tweaks or things like that, that, you know, that I think that it's something that we could probably pass. We're, I think we're close to that right now. Yeah, we're close to obviously tonight. We yeah. can't vote on that, obviously. No, we, but, no, no, no. I understand that. 
but um, we also don't want to we, we want to try to not throw any money at it right now because yeah. the whole idea behind the reserves is what happens if god forbid we have a million or two million dollar something that comes up and we've got to you know do it right away i mean i, I mean like a like a road or something like that right. or a bridge so well, we just we don't know on the whole Caltrans project too. For one thing, that's, that's so much still up in the air. But, but yeah. Well, I I think um, so. Just so I make sure I understand, if you're looking at um, about five hundred, um, is it five hundred thirty-six thousand? Yeah. Out of general fund, that's pretty severe. Yeah. That's very severe. Um, so I would um, I would need some guidance from the city manager of where that could be accommodated that and I'm not sure that's necessary given that you have the ARPA funds mm -hmm. right now so um we can we can certainly um, go back again um and um evaluate but that is is pretty very aggressive right now Thank you so much, Rita, for everything. So, all your long hours of so working. So, if I can just, yeah, give direction to the city manager on what you'd like to see with that, because that's pretty severe. I think severe. it's at this point, is we have the consensus of the, the council to, to move forward on what's presented then. Is that correct? Is there any other questions? And then, if there's any, obviously, any, uh, tweaks in the future, we can amend the, 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 this at the budget at this point in time. But right now, just move forward. Um, bring it back and so we can vote on it then. I think, I think we, unless, I think we probably do a full on the the yeah, I'm sure there will be, but. But the budget that we passed, it's my understanding, if I may, Mr. Mayor, it's my understanding we can't pass by law a deficit budget. Yeah. By law. No, that's not the case. You can spend your reserves Reserve. as part of your plan. Well, that's, that's my point. Yes. Oh, I see what you're yes. saying. Yeah, we can't say this is a minus 543,000 or minus 924,000. Gotcha. I'm sure. Yes, Mr. You can't do something that shows your fund, if it's the general fund, is left in a deficit. But you have $5 million in reserves. So, yeah. So, yeah, you're having a one year budget that's going to eat into that uh, fund balance but that's it's not a deficit spending program right. uh, i think is the term they use long and the other thing i i was going to interrupt a while ago but i didn't want to extend the meeting so i'll do it now <laughs> it's only seven fifty. There, there is no legal requirement that you adopt a budget okay that's not in law that's oh, not really? anything the legal requirement, as I understand it, is that every two weeks you adopt, or I'm sorry, you pay your bills. Okay, that's the end of the legal oh. requirement. However, you have all of your programs, your bonds, and everything else out there who require you to present them a budget. Who right. Require right. you right. present to them right. the audit report. That makes, that makes sense. Audit report. Right. Okay, and they want to see copies yeah. of that, and many of right. those funding program set a deadline date yeah. for those documents to be presented to them to show that you are doing your fiduciary responsibility right. for the city. Exactly. So that makes yeah, sense. we'd like to get this adopted as quickly as we can, immediately move on to uh, having Reda get the audit report done uh, for last, last year, not the current year. And then set a date for our strategic planning. I'm sorry? We need to set a date for our strategic planning because, as Reda said, we need to plan exactly yep. how we're going to do it and then tweak accordingly. Assuming on September 7th you adopt a two year budget, right? Okay. After that, you adopt a strategic plan. plan. Staff will work diligently to try and show that the budget follows the strategic plan, but the likelihood that it follows it. Oh, well, yeah. is you know, that's out the window, right? Well, okay, so yeah. what we really need to hear in the strategic plan is what do you want to do, right? Okay, and then we'll go back and, like we said, amend the budget, yep, figure out how we could do it. And yeah, I agree, yeah. All right, any other questions? Well, if there's no other questions, comments, and by anybody, then we'll just adjourn the meeting. So we need direction. And I still think put it on the September 7th. Correct. September 7th. I'm sorry. I didn't give a date this, but yes. Thank you.
We need find a turn. Any more savings Oops, wait. You can. Find any more savings you can. No. Yes. I like to thank everybody that came out and helped us. Yes. We had a great turnout again and got a lot done. I think we're going to do yes. one more. By next Monday, we're going to be turning trees. So Saturday. Yeah. yeah, we did. We had a, a great cleanup day. We had a lot of stuff that was. Uh, cleaned up and man it was blackberry bushes are out of there now Ooh, yeah those were fun we actually ripped them out with the truck mostly okay. so, oh, yeah so we got all the posts and all those out of there but yeah it was a good it was a good cleanup day good. it worked out really nice good. so any other, any other councilman comments yep. it would be good to thank uh, retta for a presentation of her last city budget Oh my goodness. Oh, that's right. We just don't want to oh admit. my goodness. Thank you, Retta. Yes, oh, I wish I was showing you the budget with the million dollars of you know <laughs> excess funds, but we'd find a way to spend it, I know. <laughs> you still got some time. You can find you can pull a miracle out. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I think you'll be um I think you've got some time to work through these um challenges though. Well the ARPA funds will help. They will. Yeah. They will. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. But you know what, Corey? In the past, we didn't have ARPA funds, which is the no, exactly. recovery. No. Revitalization. American Rescue Plan. American Rescue Plan. We never had no. a, an American Rescue Plan to bail us out. No, we had so. all for us in 2009. Yeah. yeah. So that was before us. Oh, our <laughs> What? A R R A. Arbra. Arbra. Sounds uh, Scottish. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Reda. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Arthur. Yes, Arthur. Thank you, Arthur. Thank you, yes, Arthur. 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 Yes, Arthur.